goody. What's goody? Hold on. Today we are drinking pink GMT. Cheers! <laughs> I'm gonna try my best to remember this episode um, because it was a very quick episode. I mean, nothing eventful really happened. Okay, so we start off, you know, Tommy gives the women an assignment that they're gonna go and meet the men because this is the final four, okay, the final four is the final four couples and this has never happened before. So the final four couples are Venetia and Joelle, um, AJ and Kyra, Liz and that guy, and KG and Amber. <laughs> I'm being petty. <laughs> Anyways, so, yes, yeah, so this episode, they get to meet each other's family, so, um, so, Amber would get will meet KG's family, KG will meet Amber's family. So the starting off, we see Venetia and she's introducing Joelle to her mom, her stepdad, and her eldest daughter. Her daughter was so cute with the little locks and the little shape up, and her daughter was so cute. Um, so you know, he meets her family and whatnot, they're having a good conversation. Joelle, because he's very um personable i would imagine that in any sort of family setting he would get on with everybody people would like him because he comes across very likable off bat so i didn't think that was going to be an issue for them two and it seems as though uh, venetia's daughter has also picked up that she seems to be really really happy and she tends to talk about joelle quite a lot she said that she put her mom's business on front street now you know what i'm saying i'll be telling people that i'm talking about him all the time in the house but um <laughs> Um, but her, she said it, she said, you know, my mom keeps talking about you, um, and I've never seen her this happy, so, it's nice. Um, I have to say though, Venetia's parents look really young, you would have thought that was her older brother and sister, I was like, how is that your mom, unless you and your mom are like three years apart, I don't understand how that's your mom, um, but anyways um that seems to have gone well for venetia it is what it is so the next scene we see is jason meeting um liz's family he gets to meet i think liz's sisters and her brother so he's meeting liz's family and whatnot you already know he's gonna put the charm you already know he's gonna talk crap Cause that's his number one thing um he's over there he meets them and then he tries to open up with prayer when have you seen jason <laughs> let me say something i have never seen somebody play a game the way jason plays the game i give it to him i give it to him i said like, you hate the game not the player you understand and that's jason um, he fully opened up with prayer and then she, Liz is like legit impressed, like it's so cute how impressed she is because, um, she doesn't understand that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, but, um, he was there and he was very confident, I'm very confident, I know, you know, he knew that he was going to impress them. He knew because you know why he knew that because he has already captured Liz and he's already said things to Liz that she's probably gone off and said to her sub siblings that he's so wonderful he's so amazing he's this he's that he's everything in the, in the world so you know already they've probably been won over by her um, and whatnot I mean it was nothing eventful he met her parent her family and they seem to have liked him and he prayed for <laughs> let's move on let's move on okay so now we go to kg and amber and amber is meeting kg's brothers now let me say something kg's brothers keenan and kisan and oh yeah i don't even know about these names um but 
both of them are gorgeous. Let me tell you, I like a good looking black man. They look good. They're well moisturized as well. Very well moisturized. The fashion was on point. Uh, the little outfit they had on. The hair was nice. Skin was looking all moisturized and whatnot. Vitamin C and all types of vitamins on their skin. I was like, okay. Um, I bet you Emma was looking at them brothers like, yeah, I got the... <laughs> she was... <laughs> She probably realized she didn't get the the Omarion of the group. She got like she got the little fears of the group. Cause KG's brothers were gorgeous. Both of them have got Keon and Keysan and Keenan and all of them. All the K's. Love. Well moisturized. <laughs> this whole scene, yeah, let me take this off it. <laughs> So they're talking, Keenan, the very fine brother of KG, basically says, you know, he's complimenting Amber, he's complimenting and he's like, oh, you're beautiful, you're this, you're that. So why hasn't nobody wrapped you up yet? The way he said it, like, you're so amazing. Why has no one made you he, he, their, their wife? Listen, women don't like to be asked that, I'm gonna tell you right now. Single women don't like to be, especially if you're a single woman, you feel like you are a cat. And then somebody asks you, you're such a cat, how come I nobody caught you yet? You're just like... <laughs> and he was basically implying there's something wrong with this girl, because she's so amazing. Why is she single? Why is she single? Which is such a stupid question in a way, anyways, because there are so many amazing guys out there who are also single. I mean, let's be frank. Um... <laughs> I thought that question was very um, poignant because I felt like, in a way, Keenan was sussing out um, Amber and her nonsense. Because I, like I said before in previous episodes, Amber is not that into KG, okay? And in the end, you really see it in her face that she's really like, <laughs> like she's really like a deer in the head like she really is not into him like that she's not that attracted to him that, that's really the truth but um keenan really took it there let's just say that he took it there <laughs> okay now we're moving on to kyra is introducing aj to her mom and her best friend i honestly thought that was her sister because i was like she looks like her no the, the girl that she introduces as her best friend no, she looks like her mom. I'm like, that lady looks more like your mom than you. Um, but anyways, so she's introducing AJ to her best friend and her mom. Her best friend is also a lawyer. So you already know. <laughs> and her mom looks really sort of established, if that makes sense. Her mom was giving me rich black auntie vibes as well. One of them like educated black aunties that, you know... She's been driving a Mercedes Benz since the late 80s. Like, you can't chat to her. She's bougie, you know? That's a, that's what Kyra's mom was giving me. She's one of them rich aunties, bougie, well-educated. She don't take no one's BS. Don't talk to her about no nonsense, you know? Her mom was giving me that vibe. Um, so, AJ gets to meet these, these two women. <laughs> so, as they're sitting there talking, um... Kyra's mom seems to be liking Jay's, um, sorry, AJ, which is quite surprising for me because I didn't think her, her mom would like AJ, but she even told, told him, I like you. Um, but when it comes to the question of where do you see each other, see Kyra, this, the night, he has no plans for Kyra. So as much as people, <laughs> he said he don't know. He said he don't know. As much as people like to go in on Kyra, like, oh, Kyra, she's this, she's indecisive. Why would you choose a man who has no plan for you? Like, where are you going with this man? You're just gonna be what exactly? Do you know what I mean? Like, if a man has no plan for you, like he's not trying to get married, he's not trying to have kids, he's not trying to settle down, he doesn't have a vision. You have to believe in the man's vision. He has no vision for you and him. So what are you choosing him for? Like, what, what are you, that's, this is one of the reasons why she's also like, mm, I'm not really sure about this man. Yes, I choose AJ, but I'm not sure about AJ because AJ doesn't seem to have a plan. A man should have a plan. A woman should meet you and you should have a vision and a goal and a plan for your future together. It may not go exactly to plan, but you should have some kind of plan. AJ doesn't have a plan for Kyra. 
And this is one of the reasons why she's so indecisive with him. It's like, what am I going to do with you? I might just end up being your girlfriend for the next 15 years and that's it. And that's not what she wants. That's not what she wants. That's why she was choosing Jason before because she felt like Jason had a plan. But Jason had a game plan. He did not have a vision and a leadership sort of mentality. He just had a game plan to win this show. But AJ don't have a plan for Kyra. AJ's plan for Kyra is to make her his right now. But he's not making her his tomorrow and his next week and his next month is 10 years from now. He has no future for her. He, has, he doesn't know what's gonna happen obviously we all don't know what's gonna happen but like you would have a slight plan like okay in the next five years i want to be here i want to do this i want to look like this he has no plan for her so that's gonna make a woman indecisive and it's understandable as to why she's indecisive i wouldn't choose a man who doesn't have a plan for me what am i choosing you for where are we going what is your vision write your vision down and make it clear you don't have one where are we going nowhere excuse me leave me alone <sighs> so now we're moving on to amber introducing kg to her brother sister and childhood friend at the same time um what's his name joel is introducing venetia to his sisters which is all good and dandy i mean nothing eventful really happens it's just boring i think with joel he his sisters kind of found Venetia to be a little bit possessive apparently they found her to be a little bit possessive and she seems to be more into him than he is into her that his sisters picked that up you know like she's really into you and you know and that could be seen as a negative it could be seen as a positive because um one of them I think said you know sometimes you need the girl to um be more into you because then you know she's serious about you um which is can it can be true sometimes um but then on the flip side as well they're trying to make her out to be like she's this desperate chick and i think that's how venetia is coming across and maybe she doesn't mean to come across like that but she's coming across like she's desperate for, for joel and you know he ain't not to be desperate for sis um <laughs> kg is talking to amber's family He's talking to Amber's family and um, I don't know, the vibe that his sisters are giving him is like, yeah, we ain't impressed by you, honey. We ain't, you ain't up to her caliber. It's, I think it's because also, because the kind of job that Amber does, you know, women who earn a lot or women who are like career women, they tend to want to go for like career men, you know? It's like, if you're an attorney, you want to go for an attorney, you know? You don't want to go for a guy who's less than women, just naturally, um date up and marry up okay so for amber she is working for the da her, her marrying up would be like marrying a judge you know or another high-powered attorney um uh, it won't be to marry a radio personality even though that's not a bad job but in her sense it's almost like stepping down i don't know there's something about that that's just in my spirit and I'm not saying that to look down on KG or anything like that, but that's just something that I'm just picking up. Um, and his sisters are just like, oh, you know, she's our superstar. We don't want her to dim her light. And he's there calling her a goddess queen and things like that. Listen, I always find those type of terms when a man calls a woman a goddess, a queen and this and that. I just find those type of terms to be red flags because usually it's either a super insecure man okay or it's a man that's full of crap <laughs> that's just both of those ain't cute and both of those don't fly um he was like oh i would never dim her light she you know uh those men are insecure yeah you say that now but when she's busy and she ain't got time for you you're gonna have a different tune okay let's just be frank um kg to me i feel for him i feel like he's a hopeless romantic you know and it's sad it's cute but it's sad it's like i want him to find love but amber ain't it <laughs> she ain't it brother she hasn't been it this whole entire time and it also worries me to think that he doesn't seem to have this sort of awareness of people or discernment of people because like he should have discerned um amber and i'm not saying that to say amber is a bad person but i'm saying that amber is not his person okay my drink is finished so we're moving on to um what's his name 
Jason introducing his proverbial mother Liz to his actual mother. Um, they meet and Liz is over there acting like she's at a um, interview for a job in senior management. She's over there like, mm-hmm. Yes, I went to private school and, you know, also I have, you know, been broke to the point where I had to boil the hot water to, you know, with the kettle to take a bath. And it's like, Liz, this ain't an interview, sis. This is a conversation. Um, at the same time, when that's happening, Ashford, a.k.a. AJ, introduces Kyra to his mother where um his mother seems like you know she's all about business and his mother kind of put his business on front street by saying that aj likes to pick up all these little projects um how do we know this ain't another project and Kara's like how do i don't know i'm not another project i was like sis how do you know you're not another project because this man doesn't seem to have a plan for you in the sense of your relationship <laughs> um AJ's mom kind of put him on front street. He really kind of showed that even his mom picks up his, um, what can I say? How can I say this? His lack of commitment, you know, that he's somebody, yes, he might do something, but it's only interesting right now. And then he loses interest in it. If his mom picks that up. Uh, and that's alarming because why would you want that? Why would you want to be with a man who today he wants you tomorrow he's not quite sure about you mm, i'm not quite sure about that either it's not ideal um yes and you know obviously i'm not here for aj i'm sorry for jason and liz and their so-called chemistry so-called relationship so-called she's my special somebody like whatever no one's here for the nonsense. I am buying it. I don't care if, if Jason is putting Liz on his covers, but you're still hitting up Kyra and you're still texting her. So Jason is a dog. Dog. Anyways, um, let's just finish off this review. Um, so obviously in the end, we're at the absolute end. The couples have to meet, you know, they have to choose each other. Okay, we choose each other kind of thing. So... Venetia and Joel they choose each other big surprise KG and Amber choose each other big surprise um, Liz and Jason choose each other big surprise um, and then when it comes down to Kyra and AJ I knew Kyra wasn't gonna choose him when she walked into that room I said she's not walking like she like this is gonna be a, co a positive conversation for him um and even the way she started the conversation i was like listen i would have walked out that room for you reject me honey i would have been like bye <laughs> bye um so kara basically says she's still unsure about aj she's unsure about him she's unsure about him and she's not gonna be pressured into making a decision if she's not sure so she told him that she's not ready to love that you know she ain't choosing him. He chose her, but she ain't choosing him. Um, and I think a lot of people felt sad for AJ because it was like, oh my gosh, you let, you know, uh, what's her name? Alexis go for this woman. I fought for Kyra and this, that, and the third. First of all, AJ was never that into Alexis. Let's stop with the lies. Let's stop with the lies. He went on a date with her at the beginning of the show and never really dealt with her until the end of the show when he realized his only option was Kyra. Okay, he was never into Alexis. Okay, like I said in my previous review, he never called her. He hardly ever called her. He hardly ever spent time with her. So he was not that into her. Let's stop with this nonsense, okay? Um, so even if he didn't choose Kyra, he still wouldn't have chosen Alexis. AJ strikes me as the kind of person who would have just self-eliminated. Like if Kyra would have been sent home and it was down to AJ and Alexis, AJ would have been like, let me go home. <laughs> let me go home to Kyra. Um, so he would have never chosen Alexis to begin with. And that's not a knock on Alexis. It's just that AJ's not that into her. He's not. And I don't think he's the right guy for her either. Anyways, um, but his actions is just showing that he's really not that into her. Um, but... 
So yeah, she doesn't choose him. I mean, social media's been going off on on um, Kyra. You know, people calling her names and people going after her. And it's like, you know what? I respect the fact that she is unsure about him. So she's not going to turn around and be like, okay, I'm going to choose you for the sake of just choosing you. Like she says, she wants to be married once to one man and that's it. So she wants to make the right decision. And I respect that for Kyra. I'm like, I respect your, I respect what you're doing. I respect everything that you're saying because yeah you just want to do this one time you don't want to go through marriage and divorce marriage and divorce like you know people say divorce is like a death <laughs> and why would you want to go through that more than once death happens once why do you want to go through like three four divorces um so i get it and people are going in on her but i respect the fact that she's sticking with her guns she's sticking with her guns she's unsure about aj so she's sticking with him I mean, not she's sticking with her gut instinct. I honestly think Kyra has a gut instinct about AJ that is just negative. That's why she's holding back with him, uh, you know. But then, in despite all of that, he still says, you know what? I still want to get to know you. I still want to spend time with you. Listen to me. AJ wants Kyra. Okay, he wants that woman. Um, but AJ just needs to fix up and say, what do you want her for? You know, what is it that you want with her? Do you want to be with her for the meantime? You want to be with her for the long time? I don't know. But this season of Ready to Love, season four, has been the most interesting season of all the seasons of Ready to Love. Um, it's probably been one of my favorites. I cannot wait for the reunion. I saw a snippet of the reunion and it seems that David, the cowardly dog, is going to be at the reunion. So I cannot wait for this reunion, okay? Because it seems like it's going to be fire. And I hope, I pray, <laughs> that David is held accountable and he is gathered, okay? Gathered for his behavior towards Liz. Somebody needs to gather David all the way together, okay? anyways um thank you for watching my video if you haven't already make sure you click that subscribe button and share this video with all your friends and your friends 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 and them and um come tune in next week where we'll be discussing the reunion i think there's going to be a three-part reunion i'm not quite sure but we're going to discuss the reunion in detail okay in detail um until then be beautiful from the inside out and Peace.